Hello everybody, welcome to the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. My name is TJ Osmo QD Sanders, and once again, I am joined by Fro Dan. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. Uh, you looks like you attached the cutie back to your name, TJ. Is that what's going on? It's just like habit at this point. All right. It's like so, muscle memory. So you're going, you're not going with Azumo, you're just Azumo QT. You can call did, me QT. Did I ever ask, I will, did I ever ask where Azumo came from? Uh, it was just a random generated name uh, when I played World of Warcraft. Oh, so you clicked the RNG. random generated name. It was actually Azuma. Uh, uh, but, but Azuma, Azuma sounded female. It did. So Azumo. Changed it to Azumo. Gotcha. Fun fact. Well, this is day number three of the Redemption Tournament for the Legendary Series Season 2. Uh, we've seen two players qualify through the Redemption Tournament so far. Um, on the first day, we saw Trump. And on the second day, we saw Lead Paint. And we have seven more players vying for another spot at that $25,000 LAN. That's right. And we're going to see Group C today, where you have eight players, sorry, seven players, that is, uh, because the eighth player was a first-place finisher. This week's second-place runner-up, who gets an automatic buy, is Roger from mm -hmm. Team Wave Spider. He placed second at the Via Game House Cup, and you might be recognizing him for when he was in that picture where Kalento was taking a nap yeah. during the series. Yeah, that was that series. It was a pretty rough series for Roger, but he's going to be looking to redeem himself mm -hmm. for today. Of course, it is going to be Conquest. Uh, Conquest, of course, best That's of right. five. Nothing's changed since yesterday. Nothing has changed at all. But let's go ahead and recap it for anybody who's tuning in for the very first time to some kind of Hearthstone broadcast. Matches we played in best of five where players have to win with each deck, which means as soon as you win with a deck, it's eliminated. Each match is considered blind pick. You're allowed to pick whatever is in your lineup as long as it hasn't been eliminated, a.k.a. as long as you haven't won with that deck. The first player to win three matches moves on. Indeed. And, of course, the reason why Dan and I are able to be here and the reason why we can have cool things like that sword behind us is because of our wonderful sponsors. Plantronics and Gigabyte have hopped on board for Season 2 of the Legendary Series. And they're letting us do a whole bunch of fun stuff. This season has been um, pretty intense um, so far. Yeah. And we're still not even, I mean, we haven't even had half the players qualify for the land finals. There's going to be 16 players competing for $25,000. So if you guys want to support what we do here at the Legendary Series, uh, hit up those links below. Maybe purchase yourself some Plantronics headsets or even some Gigabyte motherboards. Yeah, that's right. And now you have the opportunity to really support us as well over at ESL by hashtagging HLS on social media and stay engaged in the conversation. Tell us about some of your favorite moments. Uh, this today is specifically for all the people who love the open brackets. We don't oh, have yeah. any guys who got through here through the invite process. They instead are through sheer qualification through those gauntlet of those Challenger Cups happening earlier in the season. So finally it happens, and now is an opportunity for people to rally behind it. Although, uh, you know, it's one of those things where some of the names you've recognized before, Silent Storm, Roger, even guys like Luffy, for example, yeah. even if you might recognize them, they came through the Open. Yeah, they had to beat a lot of players uh, to get where they are right now in the Legendary Series. Mm -hmm. We're also doing a raffle today. You can head over to esl.gg slash redemption series. And we're giving away some Plantronics headsets. We're giving away some classic packs. So if you want to enter in that raffle, go to that site and uh, follow the instructions on your screen. Um, it's pretty cool. I'm going to enter, even though they don't let me. So how do you enter if they don't let you? Proxies, VPNs. Gotcha, gotcha. Separate IPs. And you, like, anagram your name. Yeah, 30 Reddit accounts. Mm -hmm. So instead of a Zumo, it's what? A Muza? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, never a mind. A Zuma TQ? <laughs> exactly. Or just a Zuma QD1. 330. <laughs> gotcha. It, it's completely inconspicuous. Nobody Zuma would ever QD even know. Zumo QDXVII. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we did have a chance to talk to some of the players that are going to be competing today. You mentioned that all of the players competing were from the open bracket. So uh, they talked about uh, their experiences going through the bracket, if they're scared of any of their opponents today. So uh, let's go ahead and see what they had to say. I feel like this group is very, very solid, and um, yeah, coming out on top of it would be would be a great feeling. No, everybody's good. Anybody can beat anybody in this tournament. I'm pretty confident to face um, any of them. I think it's one of the easier groups than the other groups. It's not. I think Group A was the most stacked, since they had Savids, Trump, and a bunch of other known players. Some of them are are more 
um, more known names. You have like Silent Storm, but you know there's a lot of like really really strong grinder tier uh, players in this group. Yeah, probably Luigi's Silent Storm, maybe Roger. Yes, he is really excited, and he's also very nervous. Bad decision could mess up the entire game. I think I can play some control matchups pretty well. Oh, there's more money on the line, I guess. I mean, the money's good, but it's I don't think it's the main thing isn't for the money. I'd rather get my name known. The recognition is more important. Uh, it'll mean a lot. He said I will do my best to win tomorrow. Prepare to lose. <laughs> I'm coming for you. No, uh, I mean, good luck, have fun. Man. I like Azuzu. I'm putting it out there, man. He's got the balls to say he's coming for the people. Everyone's just like, yeah, I'll do whatever and hope I win. Yeah. This guy, he's coming for them. <laughs> yeah. He was one of the highest placing um, players that competed today. He yeah. uh, lost in, in the third, fourth place match or in one of the semifinal matches. And uh, he had a really impressive run through his week. So, um, And actually... Uh, we are going to take a look at the players that are going to be competing today. And Azuzu, I think, I believe is going to be in the first matchup. So Group C, Azuzu, Luigi's, Koroneko, Luffy, Soundstorm, Domdis, and, Sp well, from Wei Spider, Roger. Tomorrow we will be seeing Group D. Um, that'll be the last match of the week, right. or the last uh, group of the week. Kaldi, Tom, Lead Paint, of course, he won't be participating because he qualified yesterday. Yeah. And then Oskaka, Limujux, Too Wet, and Amaz. Amaz. That'll group be tomorrow. D looks actually very competitive. Yeah. Yeah, Oskaka, Amaz, uh, even players like uh, Too Wet um, qualified twice, like Lead Paint, to the Open, so they'll be good players to watch. But let, let's take a closer look at Group C, which is the group that we'll be seeing today. We'll start off with Azuzu and Luigi's fan favorite, or at least Amaz. Or <laughs> Amaz? Frodan's favorite. I mixed you up with Amaz. Oh, oh, you called me Amaz. Yeah. It was an wow, accident. Wow, DJ. I apologize. You're really lucky to begin the show and not too many people are watching. The last name that I, I saw... I was about to unleash the fanboys. <laughs> the last name that I command. saw on the last graphic was Amaz. And then I looked at you and I was like, Ugh, I can't. TJ. I apologize. Just give me the shovel. <laughs> just give it to me. There's a sword behind you. <laughs> just do it quick. Just just stop digging. Corneco versus Luffy is going to be after Zuzu versus Luigi's, followed by Silent Storm versus Domdis. We didn't get to see Domdis or Corneco on those interviews. But uh, if there's anything for sure, these guys definitely have some skills. I heard today that the lineups from players are very interesting, to say the least. Yeah. Now, I do know that a few players uh, might have specific tendencies. For example, I feel like Silent Storm is just a hipster. So he's like the guy that likes to bring a new deck and confuse the living hell out of people. Mm -hmm. Then you have guys like Luffy, who practices in that group with Impact. A uh, really good deck builder, as well as a few other guys, maybe even Jockey. So, if as anything, maybe Luffy's going to bring that aggro style again, even though he's more than capable of playing mid-range and control. And uh, we do know that Roger comes from Taiwan, which does have those tendencies to play really, like, uh, I just want to say that he plays probably the best decks that possible. Uh, but there are some weird in like tendencies from the Taiwanese. Like, for example, they always really like Shaman. Um, so if he, if there's any person to, like whip out the mid range shaman and just like win a game or two with it, it'd be a guy like Roger. Yeah, there's a large variety of decks today, and I think almost every class is represented. So it's going to be uh, a pretty exciting day. And I believe, every class is represented. Um, except no, shaman. we don't have shaman. Okay, no so shaman. no one's playing shaman today. Yeah. Um, I took a second glance and didn't see shaman, but every other class besides shaman is represented. We actually have our first match just about ready. First matchup is going to be between Azuzu and Luigi's. Now, Azuzu competed in week number one, where I mentioned earlier. He made it to the semifinals. And Luigi's competed in uh, the last week, uh, week number four. And um, he went out in the quarterfinals, or the sort of quarterfinals, the second elimination match. So he basically was tied for fifth, took that fifth, sixth place spot. Both these guys had relatively strong performances on, on their first day but relatively weak performances on their second day. So similar similarities across the board. Their decks, though, not so much. Yeah, very different. In fact, is that six unique classes? I think it is. It is. Druid, War uh, Hunter, and the Paladin for Azuzu. And we have Warlock, Rogue, and Warrior. 
for Luigi's. Mm -hmm. Now, Luigi's for a long time was hyped by a lot of his fellow teammates over in Mana Grind. He's probably uh, one of the best open players or um, the best open player uh, yeah. in the entire team. That was a long time ago. Not sure exactly about how he's been transitioning since Mana Grind has effectively died off and closed for quite some time now. He took a break from the game. Took a break from the game, I guess. Yeah. And now he's coming back, starting to refocus, double down, and see if he can win some Hearthstone World Championship points and some money, but most importantly, mark himself into that top echelon of play. Yeah. Start off with Warlock versus the Druid. Looks like it's leaning more towards that zoo, flood the board, but we see a throwback card, the Argent Squire, to start things off. Yeah, it seems more like uh, the classic zoo, and Luigi's was... Um, the one of the self-proclaimed fathers of Zoo. He said he was playing Zoo long before Zoo ever became popular. And when he was making his run through runs, so proclaimed. <laughs> he was, uh, I, I mean, yeah. He took a break for a long time, and when he was making his runs through the open uh, tournaments before he took that break, uh, this was like pre nax even almost. Um, he said he, he did it on the back of his homemade zoo deck, so not surprised to see the Argent Squire just the Argent mixing Squire. it up. Yeah. Argent Squire is amazing if you can get some buffs on it. It used to be an Argent Squire coin shattered sun cleric. Like that kind of stuff was ridiculous. Or yeah, or Coin Blood Knight was also Coin Blood Knight was also a really powerful tool. Um, but because Argent Squire has relatively lost a lot of its potency just as a card in terms of rush and damage, uh, people haven't really been playing it much. Not to mention that there's not many permanent buffs anymore. Dark Iron Dwarf no longer permanent buffs. Mm -hmm. um, and people aren't even playing much of Dark Iron Dwarf anyways. Implosion has effectively replaced it. Yep. It's hard to find. Oof, the four mana turn. slots, super awkward in Zoo already because it's filled with Defender of Argus Implosion. Mm -hmm. And four mana is not a good spot for, for Zoo, because either they're wanting to play like multiple things, or they're wanting to empty their hand in order to make room for like a Doom Guard. Right. That's more so classic Zoo because mid range Zoo sometimes gets caught with high end cards in their hand, and they use cards like Void Caller, um, to help thin it out. But right, it's just four is so contested now. Yeah. And Dark Iron Dwarf seems to be muscled out. Like you said, there's the Void Caller, which summons demons. There's Defender of Argus, Implosion. Where do you fit in the Dark Iron Dwarf before you just start getting it too clunky? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This does seem like the standard zoo, just with the Argent Squires thrown in for some little, a little bit more stickiness on the board in the early game. Sure. Now, you haven't seen Swipe yet. He coined out a 4-drop, which makes it feel like you don't want to use Implosion so now. Many. If you're not going to use Implosion now, you can use Power Overwhelming to control the state of the board. Implosion here is always across your fingers for a kill plus no swipe. And, uh, you know, Luigi sees that Azuzu shakes his head and he's about to find out he doesn't have swipe. That's always a great feeling. Yeah. You play Implosion against Druid with the assumption that your opponent has swipe. So Ooh. when they do have... There is a Dark Iron Dwarf. Sorry, give it to continue. Well, that was pretty much the point. But Dark Iron Dwarf, uh, it's put in like one copy in Classic Zoo. Like not the whole full-on Demon Synergy. Like you, you max out at Sea Giant. You don't have Dr. Boom. You don't have Melganus, things like that. Well, there's two approaches to There are actually three approaches to Zoo. One is a board control centric uh, tempo through Demons yeah. and flooding the board. Uh, there's also token approach where you have like Sea Giant and Dark Iron Dwarf to benefit off of the massive amount of tokens. And then you have Void Terror, which is like really powerful minions, huge swings on the tempo board uh, through getting like the amazing power of death rattles. And sometimes you even incorporate some really late game scaling Dr. Boom and, and Melganis. Uh, actually, there's also another one too that Chalky was throwing into the aggressive zoo. Face zoo. Yeah, it's just like aggro zoo, which is you're going for a bunch of damage and try to rush down your opponent in pressure for the win. Yeah. So there's so many variations that it's really impossible to fully predict your opponent correctly every single time. That's why that's why Zoo is just honestly one of the best decks now, top three, top four. Yeah. The, uh, the life tap mechanic is what makes it strong. Well, you're I think constantly it's just drawing the threats. Even more than the life tap, it's just the versatility of the deck. Um, 
you know, Hearthstone's a game, like, you know, most card games are about putting your opponent on ranges. Like, what can they do? What can't they do? And how do you predict Zoo correctly? Let alone it with a class that doesn't really match up well against it. Druid <laughs> struggles to fight back board when you stack up uh, a wall like this. Yeah, especially a large, medium-sized board. They can deal with right. a, a large board filled with small creatures with cards like Swipe and Wrath, but Swipe and Wrath don't do anything to a board like this. Maybe able to stall yeah. for a couple turns, but it looks like the game might just be over right now. Yeah. There's four, ten, uh, thirteen damage plus the Doom Guard and the Power of Overwhelming. So that's plenty of damage here. Hmm. Druid has been a staple for a long time, but over the past couple weeks, it seemed like Druid is starting to become somewhat of a a liability in a lot of these players' deck lineups. Well, the, the, it's it's like, you know, the next level of what the metagame is. Druid will never truly be bad if your opponent plays control because of the pressure it can do. Yeah. You know, like, control handlock, Druid still matches up decently against it, putting pressure on control warrior. Uh, you can always win against that. Even, like, you know, classes that try to play control but aren't exactly, like, the best at it. Mm -hmm. Like, um... Like Paladin, you still have a reasonable chance against it. Or Freeze Mage, you can always like win against that too. The game's over by a long shot. I mean, the Abusive Sergeant and the Power Overwhelming is plenty of damage. Not to mention the Doom Guards. So wrapping up game number one was this was a tough matchup from the very beginning. But look at that, seven seven egg. Yeah, the Ruby and egg. And then even once you get through that, you got to deal with a four four. Eleven eleven worth the stats, and the Weirdies takes. Game, right? Number Pretty one. systematic. Yeah. That, this is nothing. Um, I mean, it's one of those things where the writing's on the wall. Like, what happens is it's really difficult for Druid to swing back the board without an early game tempo play, mm -hmm. and because he drew Wild Growth a little bit too late, uh, which never ever to, able to establish a big minion to fight back. Like, if you hit Doctor Boom before his opponent was starting to flood the board, mm -hmm. maybe those Boom Boss can seize control back, hit the yeah. uh, the Flame Man, the Defender of Argus, maybe even kill off the Dark Iron Dwarf. Just too much pressure, too mm -hmm. quick for him to deal with. Uh, Luigi still has Rogue and Warrior remaining. Now, the Rogue deck is a little bit interesting. Um, there's yeah. still players that rate Oil Rogue very highly. Uh, it is, and the, like, it's a really good deck Zoo. still. Yeah. Um, the Rogue deck is really powerful at seizing tempo because of preparation. Yeah. And people underestimate, like, how good it is against certain decks like Zoo, for example. Although, that's where Imp Gang Boss and a couple of the other really sticky cards really start giving Rogue trouble because you can't fully remove stuff. Mm -hmm. So if a 1-1 one, one Imp survives, then all of a sudden that it token gets power overwhelming, you lose your Violet Teacher, you don't get the board anymore. Yeah. Um, those are like the really difficult things to, to handle. Personally, I think Rogue is in a really awkward spot, and I think it just needs a little bit of innovation to keep up. I know some people are playing Hungry Dragon because 5-6 is just nuts to deal with. But even uh, giving like a small little token to your opponent if they're playing like a zoo or hunter is just not ideal sometimes. Yeah, in an ideal situation, the rogue could have clear removals. Mm -hmm. um, like if they draw really well and then after they remove, they can like refill their hand with sprint. But a lot of times it's not an ideal situation. And there's decks right now that are just a lot more consistent with their pressure, uh, like zoo and even grim patron since they have multiple. Uh, ways to put on pressure with cards like Frothy and Berserker. If you don't draw into your answers on time, then you die. But it looks like he's going to save Rogue for last. He's going to throw out the Warrior now, and the Zuzu is going to try once again to find a win with the Druid. I'm really curious if anyone can ever find a use of uh, Grim Patron outside the Warrior class. I know some people are trying to. Right now. Right now, <laughs> was trying to put it in Mage, for example, yeah. since there's an obvious synergy there. But uh, it's one of those things where Grim Patient is not a class-specific card, it's a neutral card. So hypothetically yeah. speaking, you know, we could build decks around it in other classes. It's just really tough because Warrior has so many easy whirlwind mechanics that are already put right. into Built popular in. decks. I mean, even they released another one, Revenge, yeah, yeah. right? So it almost feels like Black Rock Mountain gave Warrior three cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least for now, until someone's figured out a way to innovate it. In the meantime, that Shield Slam heavily indicates that this is a Control Warrior deck, which means the the matchup favorite is Azuzu. Which is a little ironic that Azuzu is not playing Warlock. Mm -hmm. Harrison Jones going to make the matchup even better. 
Did I tell you that I played a, a guy on the ladder named Druid and he was playing Warlock? That's awkward. Yeah. Poor guy's having an identity crisis. <laughs> Maybe it's like, well, I'm really sorry you named yourself that, bro, if you're not playing the Druid class. Probably one of those things where he got so frustrated losing to Zoo yeah. that he just started playing Zoo because <laughs> yeah. he was playing Druid all the time. Another turn two without any Innervate or Wild Growth play. That is very brutal for Azuzu, but this is just Druid things. Yeah. And actually, he's got a really bad curve outside of the Shade next Ramus. The hero power three out of the first four turns is really poor as a druid. If you can pick up an Innervate, like the next turn would be perfect because he can Emperor. Innervate out Emperor and then just make everything else cheaper mm -hmm. to try and curb out better. But right now it's just really clunky. This shade is going to have to go pretty far in the ways of getting him into these bigger drops. Yeah, the shade can just sit there for a while. Um, it doesn't really have to attack into anything. Unless you're trying to like pair threats, like you play Shade and then the, like in this case, the Azure Drake. It's like he wants to remove both. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, Shade and then Lothab comes down. He can't play spells. Yeah. Other than that, normally it just becomes like this thing where it's so latent and needs to be removed. You Shield Slam and then you play a threat that needs to actually get Shield Slam like Thorson. He doesn't have the removal anymore. It's three out of four passes. That's rough. To the point where Luigi's can realistically even think about coining out something like Harrison Jones or setting up Death Spite. I think he'd rather save the coin for more powerful use and just take the time to set up. Yeah. Like, giving the Warrior time is excellent. Yeah. The matchup improves so much for the Warrior, more so over the, the course of the first five turns than any other point in the game. If the Druid whiffs on at least two out of the first five turns, mm -hmm. Then the Warrior's win percentage goes up like right. at least 10% in the matchup. It's pretty ridiculous how much the early start matters for the Druid player uh, to pile on pressure because that's how they win. They the Warrior they force the Warrior to put, put put in a situation where they're using their cards inefficiently early or taking a lot of damage from using weapons as removal, and then eventually they get to a point where combo is threatening and the Warrior has to play inefficiently again to play around combo every single right. turn, and then they just push for a win. I like Harrison Jones to get ahead of the proactive uh, Sludge Belcher, force the Shade into a tough situation where he yeah. has to attack. Now, of course, here comes this own Harrison Jones disarmament. Luigi's would be a little bit upset, but he's got other weapons instead of card advantage. Mm -hmm. The big thing is, like, he knows he's not going to outcard Druid. He's passed a lot. Passing a lot as a Druid usually means one thing. He's holding a lot of heavy cards or situational cards to, you know, either, like, Harrison or combos or, you know, the mind control tech, big game hunters. So this doesn't really come as a big shock to Luigi's, but it's still one of those things where it's like, meh, wish he didn't have that. Yeah. Shouldn't discourage him too much from just setting up second death spite or another weapon like Fire War Act if he wants to go a little bit more conservative. Mm -hmm. um, Brawl, a couple weeks ago, would have been really good in these mid-range scenarios. Like, Brawl in the Druid matchup is usually used to remove, like, two creatures. Mm -hmm. But now a lot of more Druids are starting to put in Scenarius. Um, like two, three weeks ago, it was right. almost all Rag. Rag was n nearly the, the top out. Or yeah. It would be Boom, then Rag, and um, that was pretty much it. Oh, I was not anticipating a Brawl right here. I, I think that would be a... Which Harrison wins? Oh! <laughs> there can only be one. Yeah, I mean, that's like best case scenario for uh, against a Druid. A lot of times Brawl is used as a one card removal or a two card right. removal at best. And uh, again, this is the scenario. So I was even going to say, you either use it there or you wait for the scenarios. Because scenarios is like, even if you don't win, it's likely that you get a 2 2 out of it. So right. um, I, I really don't mind that Brawl because it's going to be hard for you to find additional value from that card as sure. the game goes on. And this Harrison's been surprisingly effective. Yeah. It's been able to withstand a lot of the, the pressure, it survived the brawl, and did more damage. It's one of those con scenarios, too, where sometimes your opponent takes too much damage, and you have the ability to go aggressive as the warrior and even kill the druid. Yeah. Execute, just deal with the scenarios. It's one of the heaviest minions in the entire deck. And then a weapon. Do you like Fiery War Axe or Death Spite here? Both well, have their merits. I think Fiery War Axe just because... Well, Death Spite would be great. He does have something that he could actually use with Death Spite next turn, being the Execute. 
Mm -hmm. Like, Despite would be is good if you have an activator or something that needs activating, uh, like Execute or Acolyte of Pain. Sure. So since he does have Execute, I don't mind the Despite, but Fireworks is going to be tough. Usually Fireworks is just used as six damage to the face, like later on in the game. Sure. Or, maybe, or like, you know, finishing off the Keeper of the Grove, Sludge Belcher yeah, Slime. Sludge Belcher, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ugh. Not feeling great. Having to swipe there so he can control his day of the board. Oh. That's very Don't good mind time. if I do. I love Dr. Boom. You people, love Dr. Boom. A lot of people hate Dr. Boom, but I love Dr. Boom. I mean, he is a pretty well-educated man. He is, yeah. Trust him, he's a doctor. He treats his boom bots well. By Not suiciding really. them, he them his into own the fire. <laughs> Innervate number two. Mm, let's see. You have thir 11 mana here. Can play Drew the Claw with Sylvanas or Thorson. Thorson makes so much things cheaper. It's actually very convenient with how expensive these things are. The big problem with this hand is that he's going to be dropping one threat per time. And Thorson makes it so he can even drop two. Like Sylvanas, yeah. Plus uh, Druid the Claw, or if he plays Thorsan here, plus a Druid the Claw, though, one removal on either Thorsan or Druid the Claw means that Luigi's can one, set up, two. can remove and no set up something you. else and start piling on the damage. The thing about this, though, is that it's going to get silenced by the Iron Beak Owl. You can't really put your opponent on having Iron Beak Owl. It feels like it's pretty popular nowadays, though. Like, the one thing I don't... I, I'm, I'm struggling to understand is how Zuzu's going to fight back for the board uh, with such an expensive hand. Like, Dr. Boom, Ancient Lord, Thorson are all great cards. Just you're only going to be playing behind. one per turn. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Boom is the only one that can, like, pull you back from a sticky situation. Force of Nature as well, but if you're using Force of Nature to clear... It, or not even just to clear, but to like survive. Right. Then you're you're pretty much in a spot where you're most likely going to lose the game, especially when your opponent is healthy enough uh, to withstand the second combo, even if you did have it. I can take the hit. Yep. So Ivy Gowl, Science of Honor, and Shield Slam. Then you can attack into the Light Well once after you kill off the Druid the Claw, and then you attack the base. So that way your opponent has a chance of healing the Light Well and getting up. Okay, well, I guess he just lets him heal for up three. I like those cute plays, though, where you just let a 50-50 chance that the light wall doesn't do anything. I guess he's not really pushing for lethal, so yeah, it doesn't really matter too much consequence. Yeah. I think if you are pushing for lethal, it's better to hit... Well, yeah, never mind. It's better to hit the light wall, because then yeah. if there's a chance that it hits the light wall, not heals the face, and then you have potentially extra damage right. that you would have to do. Savage Roar here so that he can Ooh. kill off Dr. Poom? Wow. He'd have to... What to do? What would he even throw the Lightwell into? Uh, well, he, he docked, he'd throw Lightwell in, doc, uh, his own face into Dr. Poom. Oh, yeah, he'd have to. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't want... He doesn't have enough mana to hero power. He doesn't want well. his opponent to get an easy trade onto the 5-5. Five five. But this is like the consequence of just losing the board. Mm -hmm. Druid's really far behind. Hmm. Such an wonder. inefficient use. Of Savage Roar. I don't know. He's got combo in hand too. I'm, I don't know if he's ever going to be able to put Luigi's anywhere near. Well, the other option also stinks. Zombie Chow and Hero Power. Like that, that doesn't do anything too to help you win. Oh, he's actually clearing the board here. Ooh. Well, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's going to even have significant impact either because now his opponent keeps Dr. Boom. One thing to note and, here... And, like, it's a really easy trade. Uh, one thing to note here is Luigi is basically out of cards. I mean, he's got double fireworks and an execute. That might be all he needs. Just because he can deal with the threat, still hold on to a large board. But if his board's get, board gets cleared... He's going to be in a rough position because he's has kind to... Kind of. But, like, he's got so much damage. He's going to execute just weapon the face and then put out 15 points of damage. 
Suppose that's six. Yeah. He's gonna have to swipe in uh, Force of Nature. Does that even... It does clear the board. Except for the armor smith. No, you swipe the armor smith and then you Force of Nature. Oh, okay, right? okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Keeper of the Grove. Hmm. Thing is, you're not even gaining life either. <laughs> This turn or the next turn, so the the attacks of the fire will act over three turns might realistically just kill you. Yep. And that's what I think fire war actually usually turns into in this matchup, unless you draw it early and can plop oh. it into like a paladin treader. And that's Ragnaros, and the warrior beats the druid. Luigi's on fire. Yeah. Slight smile as well. Azuzu looks defeated already. Yeah. That's a rough start for him. I, I feel pretty bad. This is definitely one of the hard, harder matchups uh, for Warrior to, to win. Mm -hmm. And in, Luigi is now has defeated the Druid, so uh, he's only got Rogue left. Rogue against Druid, pretty good against Ro for Rogue. Rogue against Paladin, excellent for Rogue. Rogue against Hunter, I guess we'll have to see what kind of Hunter that is. Yeah. We also have to see what kind of Rogue it is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it's just Oil Rogue. Yeah. I feel like that's more up Luigi's alley based off some of his choices here. He's got the Control Warrior. He's got a Zoo. And Rogue is kind of like in between that type of thing. Like Zoo is much more like a fast deck. Mm -hmm. And Warrior is a slow deck. And you get like a tempo deck. Just bring like a big versatile lineup. Yeah. Against Druid, this is um, something that Firebat used to say if it's Oil Rogue and Hard Counters Druid. That's how opinionated Firebat is. Now, of course, he also brought Oil Rogue, which ended up failing him the HCC Invitational today. But it's one of those things where I'm willing to take Firebat's advice on, on most matchups because he's played it so many times. Yeah, I agree with the fact that it counters Druid, but maybe not like hard counter. I would give it like a 60-40. Right. I think Druid's... What do, you, what do you quantify as a hard counter? Like 70 plus. 30? Yeah. Like Control Warrior uh, Freeze Mage. That's... That's beyond hard counter. Not so much at anymore. Uh, I would say before Emperor Thorsan, it was like 99-1. No way, 99-1. 99-1, yeah. If you, you, and it would You're probably, saying out of 100 games you play against Control War, you'd win one. One, yeah, I would. But nowadays, I think it's closer to like 85-15. Just with one card. All right. I can tell in your face that you're like, man, I disagree. Like, even if you say 95-5, that's still a world of difference to 9-9-1. To have five times a chance. Frodan, there's a 0% <laughs> chance. That is Zuzu running a legendary dragon, is that? Yes. It is the oil rogue. And he's got preparation, so Sprint all of a sudden is live. So he's got a turn three, turn four play. In the meantime, Druid finally hits that wild growth. And he gets so excited that he coins it out. He's got a nice curve, though. Corn Wild Growth into Shade. That's reasonable to start things off, but he's going to need a little bit more help than that. Yeah, Pilot of Shredder draw over the next two turns would be fantastic. Because the thing is, Luigi just has time. The Coin Shade, or Coin Growth into Shade, like, Shade's not going to be attacking on the next turn or the following turn. It's just too easy to remove. So he needs other things to do to pressure Rogue. And if he doesn't pressure, Luigi just simply gets to draw a lot. Yeah. Ooh, Violet Teacher is also an important draw. Yep. Might as well cycle the fan here. Nothing else to do on this turn. Sure. Keep the Shade also in check. That's another turn the Shade might not attack, by the way, because he just got lost another point of health. Yep. So now the Shade is vulnerable to a lot of things with two health. SI7 Agent, uh, you know, anything like Eviscerate just for naked. Then mm. now next turn he's vulnerable to... Deadly poison. And then the following turn, like, still vulnerable to eviscerate. So this shade effectively will just be used as a trading tool because yeah. he took that extra damage. It's a really big deal, even though people are like, eh, you know, whatever, one damage on the shade. Yeah. Well, two sprints. So you can Vile Teacher Deadly Poison next turn, and then mm -hmm. Sprint sets you up now, so that way you have a butt ton of cards. Yeah. Vile Teacher prep sprint is strong, but the Vile Teacher is going to get eaten up this turn, most likely. Which is you're somewhat okay with. Yeah. The best case scenario is, you know, if your opponent doesn't have anything to deal with it, 
then um, you can draw cards too. So here's the thing, like by playing Violet Teacher, he encourages his opponent to hero power this. And his opponent passes. Whoa! That could be a huge regret. Oh man. Bold. Pilot Shredder. Luigi's so, looks slightly confused as well. It's like your hand is that bad where you don't have a five drop. What else could you possibly have? No Harrison Jones on turn five. No hmm. five drop. No Innervate. He doesn't even feel like it's necessary to prep sprint here. He's saying, well, if you right. didn't trade in this turn, I might as well just keep trying to put on pressure. Your board must be awful. Yeah, he doesn't need to prep oil because he doesn't have to go that aggressive. He even attacks with the face so he can hedge his bets against uh, Harrison. Plus, he can prep sprint into Blade Flurry next turn mm -hmm. and create a bunch of tokens. Innervate finally comes into hand. And realistically, you might have to see some kind of swipe play with the hero power here. Yeah. He could. Yeah. He could also double swipe if he wants to continue um, to preserve his shade. Double swipe might not actually be too poor because you have Dr. Boom next turn. And also, a lot of these oil rogue lists have been running only one Violet Teacher. And like two Pod to Treaders, one Violet Teacher. Yeah. I actually don't mind double swipe at all because you have Dr. Boom as a finisher or as a finisher to follow up, and then the, the shade is still c preserved here. Innervate wow. Dr. Boom. So he wants to seize the board. Really crossing his fingers for no blade flurry, but his opponent hasn't shown any, uh, you know, any likelihood that he might have it. If he held the weapon, actually, that's indication that he has blade flurry. So prep sprint into, well, yeah, yeah. Prep sprint, you can draw into hmm. second prep and blade flurry right. would be fantastic. Because then he could clear everything on the board plus preserve his piloted shredder. He's got a lot of chances. Second oil. So this is naturally a little bit more aggressive list. Mm -hmm. You can um, eviscerate Dr. Boom, and then 1-1 one, one goes to the 5-1, and then the uh, Pilot Shredder goes in. He evaluates first. Hunt Creeper is not bad, considering there's Boom Bots. Yeah, very resilient to a Boom Bot board. <laughs> so oh, I like the sequencing, too, I think. Just in the off chance that he got, like, Flame Tongue Totem, then he doesn't have to use Eviscerate. Yeah. That ah, there's a Harrison Jones that Luigi's was expecting. Savage Roar. So there is damage potential in the next two turns. Two swipes followed by uh, the combo. A lot of damage. One of the main win conditions for Druid in this matchup is just to put on lots of pressure early. And Azuzu has not managed to do that so far this game. He ha he's not in the worst position. Right. He did have Wild Growth. But I think... He did have Shade. I think he's in a pretty good spot, though, because now Luigi's is most likely just going to play Boom. Uh, ye I think so. And then if his opponent plays Boom, then he just double swipes, pushes for damage, and mm -hmm. then combos next turn. Yeah. Is there an alternative to the Boom play here that might be better? Let's see. I don't think so. It's so he doesn't have a weapon. He's got two oils in his hand and right. no weapon developed. So before he uses either of those, he needs to set up a turn where he develops a weapon beforehand or draws into a prep. It's gonna be really hard not to to resist swiping here with with the big game hunter actually. Big game hunter swipe. Yeah. And we'll put on what ten damage you, potentially. You swipe first the face. I wonder. Harrison, oh, well, that was a weird arrow. <laughs> yeah. Target. It, was pointing at the <laughs> it looked Dr. like he was Boom. going to the boom, but I was like, what? I was like, in what world would you make that I trade? Ideally, the boom bot here even does damage to uh, the face if it gets hit. And, oh, I guess instead it goes to Dr. Boom, so he can, he can swipe again, but one thing that doesn't do is it doesn't, um, Oh, wow. Because he didn't develop the big game hunter, now he can uh, get rid of this Harrison and stay out of combo range. He can play 
Uh, backstab SI7 agent. Actually, he can loath it. He doesn't even have to Farseer. Mm -hmm. hmm. I also like Farseer, though, because it develops some... Um, it gets it out of the way, and you can use the weapon. The developing the weapon is so huge because you have two oils. Yeah, he also has anti kill bot to follow that up, to, or anti kill bot and Earth Ring Farseer to follow that up the next couple turns. So, well, that's true. Because you have the far, uh, the anti kill bot, maybe you don't need to. Either way, I still like the idea of getting a weapon out eventually, so that way he can get these double, mm -hmm. double uh, oils out. Scenarius. Just going for the board position. So, except nice. If scenario survives here, ah, well, which it's not going to. Well, I mean, if he goes all in on the heels here. Oh, it doesn't. I mean, he's got like the obvious play that sticks out to me right now is the weapon backstab oil and then farseer. The only thing is that you really need that oil to land on like low uh, so that way yeah. you can trade. Is there an alternative? He can always sprint into sap. Like he can always just use both of his heels and just backstab. That's also a possibility too. Both heels to stay out of combo range, just flip the board, and Lothar doesn't have to worry about uh, trading in. Just yeah. Pressure. Uh, but Here we go. Oil 50-50. There it is. Nice. Ain't no thing. And then you heal up the farce here after you trade. Not the far, so you heal up the SI-70. Oh, no, you heal yourself. Because yeah. you're, you're at uh, 14, 14 health. health. Yeah. He also used both swipes. If you were at uh, 15, you'd still heal yourself, probably, because of the, uh, the innervate possibility. <laughs> well, he does have Emperor Thor's in, So yeah. he can set up for a double combo, potentially, because he's reducing two pieces. So that'll mm -hmm. cost seven mana total. If he draws in the second Savage War, all of a sudden, combo turns into 22 damage, as opposed to 14. Yeah, that's actually really big now, because uh, Luigi just can't, has to deal with Thorsten plus worry about uh, pressure. Good thing for Luigi's is he actually has second sprint available in his hand. I mean, kind of, but would you rather have sprint or would you rather have the one card you're looking for with sprint? Well, I mean, <laughs> like he might. That's a tough thing just, to ask. Yeah, for. Draking here might be better. Yeah, I think Draking is actually way better. Oh he well, play the anti kill bot. Yeah, that, I'm saying the sprint's really good because he'll be able to have. To, oh, uh, okay. Opportunities to refill sure. his hand, not necessarily this turn. Well, it's actually okay. You can flurry and then keep the Drake. Because the problem with Heobot was that the Thorson survive. And you can also re-weapon, so then the second uh, oil becomes damage. So you do five damage at 13. Drake, If Drake can do four more damage, it's nine. And then um, you can get potentially seven damage more with uh, a flurry so you can get so you put him down to two yeah savage roar draw for lethal mm. whoa this is a tough decision whether or not to heal or draw with the ancient of lore is there any merit to wild growthing first well, it's only growth. one mana yeah, wild well, growth for a card. Draw one card for one mana. Yeah, either way, you're you'd still be able to fit in a hero power with the. Because if you ancient of war, there's no way that you're going to be able to clear off the ash right. break anyway. So. Wild well, growth thing for one, and then if you don't like your play, because you don't have you don't have swipes, you you use your wrath just now, so you might have only one wrath left in the deck. Ancient of lore seems to be the follow-up play. There is Wrath number two. So, how much damage the with three yeah. cards could Luigi's do the following turn with an Azure Drake on the board? A whole heck of a lot. Yeah, Viscerate uh, removes the five health that you gain, so you count down from it. So there's five on the board. It's just too risky. He goes for the combo. Oh, man. That is a whole hell of a lot of pressure left. Uh, that's reduced off of Luigi's. Now they saw his opponent go for that. Mm -hmm. BGH, a decent body. And he knows that. And I mean, there's usually not. <sighs> oh, that's nasty. That's Prep, sprint. Can he draw? I don't think he can draw on the lead. He did use one of his raid. 
from an empty board, 12 damage. Yeah, because he attacked with the weapon. That's probably his big limiting factor. South uh, South, uh, the SI7 agent. That's also pretty pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. SI7 agent, attack face, redagger. I think he's also wondering if he could die at 7 health. His opponent already used combo, already used two swipes. He would have to have Drew the Claw with Savage Roar, number two, or... Second combo. Second combo, or... F oh, it's just one force of nature. One force of nature actually kills him. Mm -hmm. It might be worth the risk if Luigi's feels like it, but this is also one of his better matchups. I think it's okay if you just go for the risk. Hit, re-dagger, you have oil flurry next turn. And now, Zuzu is on one force of nature to win the game here. He could, he has two draws to do if he wants to Wrath for one, or he can just go Ancient of Lore and Wrath. Ancient of Lore Wrath might be his best course of action here. Draw with the Lore, Wrath for three. Be sitting at 11 health. Luigi's would have five cards left. Mm -hmm. Will Luigi's have lethal the next turn? No. He has eight damage from the hand. Yeah. It's actually not really that much. Does that mean but if he has, draw? No, if he picks up Eviscerate, it's lethal. Because Eviscerate's the four damage that he needs. So there's a lot of ways for him to die. That's if he's putting him on the second oil, though. Not every rogue runs the second oil. That's true. Especially since, oh, he hasn't seen anti kill bot. He hasn't, there's a lot of things that he hasn't seen that could be cut for, um, for second oil. Like Dr. Boom double sprint. A lot of times if you run Dr. Boom double sprint, you do run one oil. Or less four drops. Or less four drops, yeah. And actually he's only seen two four drops so far, so. Okay, so he sees double five drop. That's a follow-up play for next turn. Lothab is so key, in fact. Could buy him another turn. This rate wins the game here. Okay, so now that uh, he's seen this, he might just, like, sap uh, Antique Heal Bot and play Edwin and then just let himself go next turn and just mm -hmm. wombo combo. Because now the Ancient of Lore's choice to force probably to heal. And then from heal, he can count down. He would have a 6 6, a 3 3. It's 9 damage. Uh, his opponent would be a 16 7. Oil Flurry is. Uh, an extra eight, so that's 17 damage. That'd be lethal. Mm -hmm. Even if his opponent hero powers. If he Ancient of Lore hero powers, after setting up a, a sap, heal bot Van Cleef, he would oh, have exact God. damage. And there'd be like no way to kill him because he'd be sitting at 15 health. Right. He's Just out outside the second combo. Yeah. Both have been that. used. It's a really good spot from Luigi's, and I love this play. Just hold on to that weapon. Don't attack with it. That's my only. That's the only. Although realistically, it might not really matter because you can still weapon up flurry. Mm -hmm. And then this should prompt a response where you really want a Lotheb. A yeah, Lotheb keeper. Lotheb keeper silences so that way there's only five, six damage on board. Your opponent has to generate five. Very easy to what do, though, if your opponent has, like, a cheap minion, such as the South Sea. Yeah. Well, if he doesn't draw into it, he also has to make sure that he plays around. He can't just keep piling damage on the face. Deadly poison. Mm, just a little bit short. Yep. Okay, so... Mm, so he's got like a guaranteed lethal next turn. He's got uh, oil, a uh, deadly poison, oil, and then mm. flurry next turn. So you can set up the Drake here, I guess. Mm -hmm. Drake, and then try to clean up the board as much as you can. Yeah. Remove the low thub. You might even pick up another minion, SI7 agent, Farseer, which helps. And I guess I'd play a little bit more board centric. I guess you're running out of cards here. Second sat doesn't help. I think you can kill off Lothab here, and then, um... Oh, he's gonna go for the Keeper kill. Lothab is a little bit scary, but I suppose... Killing this off is less damage, and you can still put pressure onto the board. Oh, he didn't re-weapon. Oops. Doesn't really matter, I think. Yeah. He still played around Force of Nature for lethal. Because Force of Nature hero power would have been exactly 12 yeah. damage. <laughs> Luigi's... <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Yeah. 
But he's already played around. He's already seen two swipes, two force of uh, two, one combo, uh, two wrath. So he knows that he can't punish his wrath for one. So this board is a little bit complicated to deal with. Yeah. And he's still got deadly poison flurry with oil. So that's six damage guaranteed. Next turn, he hypothetically just go weapon up, deadly poison, oil flurry. It's just that because he didn't re weapon up, he doesn't have sap available to that combo. Yeah. Mm. Is there any opportunity for Azusa to survive here and not go 0-3? Ancient of Lore heal is his best option to be defensive. Kill the Drake, hero power down to 3-1. And that should be game. Bring him down to 12 health. Yep, just a flurry. Just like the weapon up flurry with oil is enough. Doesn't even eat creatures. And he's got some <laughs> overkill. I mean, yeah. it's it's kind of amazing that the Eviscerate took this long to get to because Luigi's was like an Eviscerate off from killing his opponent multiple yeah. times. Actually, it's not even overkill because he wouldn't even be able to use the Eviscerate because he didn't re weapon up last turn. Well, this is plenty overkill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got 17 damage, <laughs> and that's going to wrap it up. And a nice, squeaky clean board to boot. Wow. Luigi's goes on to the round of four. Very impressive stuff. That's pretty sad for Zuzu. A wave goodbye as his chances to go to the Season 2 Finals has been eliminated. And that means that we're going to see Luigi's face off uh, against the winner of what? Koroneko versus Luffy, okay. which will be our next match. So, uh, Azuzu, I mean, he had a really good run. He was a really fun guy to watch when he participated in his Legendary Series Week number 1. Uh, he was very bouncy. And uh, we actually interviewed him. That was the one week that we interviewed somebody outside of the winner. And we got to, we got to hear about his life. And a uh, really cool guy. I wish him the best of luck. But uh, Luigi's is going to be moving forward. And after a long break, uh, a cool story about him was this was actually the first tournament that he participated in after a six-month break from Hearthstone. So oh, not bad. Yeah, that's a pretty good still performance. Got it. Yeah, still got it. To be honest... Uh, Hearthstone has a very sharp initial nerving curve to hit the high levels, but yeah. once you hit that, um, all you have to do is really adapt to the metagame. Mm -hmm. uh, things like good deck building tends to never go away because you can understand what a card functions as and yeah. specifically see it. It's, it's about approach to the class as well, understanding what class does well, what card can identify and fit into it. And so, like, Luigi is a player who's been at the top for a while in terms of competing in the Open Cups and qualifying and uh, being able to be a legitimate threat. With Zotac Cups, Luigi is like, was one of those slayers. He's kind of like Tice level in terms of uh, being able to be consistent. The NESL Cups as well. Yeah, exactly. Back in the day, which is where the Legendary Series mm -hmm. sort of got uh, its beginning. So Absolutely. Uh, Cornico versus Luffy next. You talked a little bit about Luffy before. What else do you know about him? I don't know. He used to be on coast, and I do know that I think he is one of the players to potentially go really far. I'm actually picking Silent Storm. Uh, versus Luffy, if that is possible of setting up mm -hmm. uh, as a final match. Yeah. But it's kind of how it can turn out. I think Corneco is also a player that people are going to be underestimating, and uh, it's going to be not as easy as Luffy may think. Yeah, it should be an exciting match. An exciting day of Hearthstone action here at the Legendary Series Redemption Series. But uh, Corneco versus Luffy is going to be our next match. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back.